to be Sabbath. Praise the Lord for another day of life, especially another Sabbath day that we may acknowledge the Lord in worship. I thank the pastor and the church for the opportunity that's been given to me to share with, uh, as I, we are here with my family at this time. As some of you may know, we have been, uh, well, we have been here for quite a while now, since the beginning of uh, January, and uh, the day we're supposed to go back home to our home island, the border closed, and uh, we're here by extended stay now. We thank the Lord for that, because he has a lot of work for each one of us. Before we open from God's word, I'd like to invite you to pray with me if you can, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, who blessed art thou, for thou art a God of love. Glory and power be unto thee, O Heavenly Father, for all God's images and idols and dust, compared, O Lord, unto thee, O living God. Thank you for your word. We pray, please forgive us of our earth. Please forgive us of our sins. Please, Lord, wash us through with the blood of your Son, Jesus. O Heavenly Father, bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we search you out in your word just now. We pray for a special blessing of your Holy Spirit, that he may come and speak to thy servant, that thou may touch his lips with the cold from thy holy altar, that your word may go through. O Heavenly Father, bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, at Seven Day Adventists, we all have uh, knowledge of the three angels' messages that's been given to us. And today we will go, we're gonna go in and look at the first angel's message. And the first one from Isaiah 14 was uh, uh, Revelation 14, 6 to 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the up, dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. So you see here, this very first angel's message that, that God has given to his people, and uh, in order for us to understand the Bible, uh, we must let the Bible explain itself to us, not us uh, taking uh, our knowledge of what we think that we uh, accrued over time to explain the Bible. We are told in Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and are drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. In other words, Isaiah is telling us, in order for us to understand the word of God, we must let the Bible itself explain it to us. From Genesis to Revelation and back and forth, line upon line, that we are able then to understand the word of God. As we see here in the very first angel's message, they tell us, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. And for us to understand what the angel is, we let the Bible explain it for us. Galatians 4, verse 13 and 14. He know through infirmity of the flesh I preach the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh he despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. In other words, here Paul is telling us here that the angel, when, when, when John saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven, he saw here the people of God, the people that preaches the truth. Here, it's referred to here as the angel here that's flying in the midst of heaven. In Galatians chapter, uh, I mean Mark chapter 16, and the emphasis given again by our Lord, yeah, Mark 16, 15 and 16, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall not be damned. Shall be damned. So we have here uh, what the Bible is telling us then, that those people who goes out and share the truth of the Bible, the message, 
Those are the, that's in reference to the angel that's flying in the midst of heaven. We also have the spirit of prophecy in the book, uh, letter 79, page 9, uh, 1900. Christ is coming the second time with power unto salvation. To prepare human beings for this event, he has sent the first, second, and third angels' messages. These angels represent those who receive the truth and with power open the gospel to the world. So in other words, here, once we believe in Jesus Christ, we uh, understand, uh, we share, we go out, we'll, we'll give commission here to go out and give the truth. And, uh, and that's the angel in reference here. In Maranatha here, page 173, no one hears the voice of these angels, for they are symbols to represent the people of God who are working in harmony with the universe of heaven. So in other words, we have been given a commission uh, to go out and share the truth. As we go out and share the truth, we, and therefore, it's in reference to John and Revelation, we are the angel that's going out and giving out the message to the world. It's God's people. As you see here, some of our uh, missionary volunteers from Tonga, we have children and we like to keep them active. We go out on, on a Sabbath afternoon to the marketplace and we pass out the literature that we have. Uh, since we've been in Tonga 20 years ago, we have translated the Sunday law into the Tongan language and also the steps to Christ and various uh, uh, literature that we, we solicit from abroad and we therefore go out and share it. As we have been here for since January, we have uh, coordinated more than 10 pallets of literature to go out uh, into the world. And God has opened doors for us to send it to New York and as we sent it to New York, the brother in New York sent back an email and said, hey, I can't take the literature. It came from China. <laughs> so we said, don't worry. God will give a, a make a way for you to pass out the literature. He goes, no, I want you to take it back. So we went back and forth and he decided, okay, I'll take the literature. We thank the Lord for that. And another pa pallet, we sent it to Guatemala. And how God has uh, made a way for the literature to go there. And also to Hawaii and and many other ones, how God is opening the doors for this literature to go out into people's... Uh, uh, over here in America, we have been doing what we call a drive-by. We roll up the literature, and like one or two pieces of literature, then we put a rubber band on it, and then we go out in the afternoon and we, we shoot them into people's driveway on each side. And this is what we've been doing uh, all week this week is we know that God has... Uh, you know, the Bible tells us in Romans 8, verse 28, for all things work for the good of them that love God. So whatever situation we are in, it's for the good of, of those that love God. So we have been trying to utilize the time that we have here, uh, distributing this literature, which is the work that's been given to us to do. Ephesians 1, verse 13, Whom he also trusted, after he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believe, you will seal with the Holy Spirit of promise. In other words, as we go out and we, and we trust, uh, we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, but the verse here tells us that the Holy Spirit then seals us. As he seals us, in other words, he's getting us ready to go out and do a work for him. Uh, don't, we, we are not to be like the one who took uh, the talent and buried it and said, Lord, Lord, here is your talent. No, we are to go out and share the truth that we have because we were once in darkness but God has given us the truth so therefore we uh, as we receive the light we go out and share with others that are in darkness and he shall bring forth the son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins so we have here the angel says I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel so the everlasting gospel is the good news, amen? But Matthew tells us that Christ will save us from our sins. A big difference to what the people teach us today, that Christ will save you in your sin. It's a difference there. From your sins, the sins that you've done before, not the sins you keep on doing and on and on and on. So that is the everlasting gospel, that Christ will save us from our sins. Same time here, Romans 6 verse 16 tells us, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. I believe this is that text is Romans 1 verse 16, not Romans 6 verse 16. 
So here, here the, the gospel of God is a power. When we believe in the, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Christ will give us power for us to overcome sin. That is the power of the gospel. That is the everlasting gospel. John 1 verse 12. For as many as believe, received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them they believe on his name. So the everlasting gospel is the power that God gives his people that believes in him to overcome sin. Here yeah, Peter tells us the same thing in Peter, 2 Peter 1 verse 3. According to his divine power that he given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. So in other words, the everlasting gospel here is the power that God gives his people to overcome. That is the, that is the power of God given to us to overcome. That's what we call, we know that in Adventism as the righteous by faith message. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people keep, uh, I remember one day I was uh, passing out his literature and I was on his corner and uh, one guy come running across the street and he looks at me, he gives me the literature and he goes, here, he goes, you mean to tell me you can keep the law of God? And I looked at him, I go, when Christ lives in me, yes I can. Uh, then he looked at me and he thought about it and he turned around and he says, okay, and he walked away. You know, because God amen. gives you the word to speak uh, in due season. Amen? amen. But at the same time, we have to to, to war against ourselves here. Uh, Steps to Christ, page 8 tells us, the warfare against self is the greatest battle that was ever fought. The yielding of self, surrendering all to the will of God, requires a struggle. But the soul must submit to God before it can be renewed in holiness. So it tells us here that the greatest warfare that we ever have is against who? Ourself, our appetite, our uh, evil tendencies to do evil with, with our heart. So in order for us to have this, we must yield ourselves and surrender all to God. Amen? And this must be done on a daily basis. We can't just surrender. I hear people, they, the evangelical, they say, you know, I remember the day I gave my life to God 20 years ago. But he's still doing the same thing that he did 20 years ago before he even gave his life to God. So we must renew our, our life to God on a daily basis. That God may live in us, Christ tell, the hope of glory, Galatians, uh, that we are told in Galatians 1 verse 27. So this gospel is going to go everywhere, the, the everlasting gospel. In this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. In other words, as we go out and, and share the message, we are, we, are not, we, are, we are not to think that we are going to convert the people into the truth. Right? Our main objective is, is to share the truth with them. It's the Holy Spirit who does the convicting, not us. But at the same, same note, you know, we are to uh, live our life according to what we preach. So that way they can look at us and say, oh, he takes all these nice things, but look at him. Huh? Look at the life he leads. So it's what they see in us. It's what convicts them to the Holy Spirit. So as we go back here to the message, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So we're going to look in here to this... Uh, there are four, there are actually there are six things. We have already gone through the angel, who they are. And a the second thing, they fly in the midst of heaven. So in other words, what is the fly in the midst of heaven that the angel said in the beginning? In verse 6, as we speak today, uh, the message is going through the midst of heaven, through the internet and the radio and television. And that's how it goes in the midst of heaven, the message that God's people give of the gospel, of the three angels' message. And meaning, uh, flying in the midst of heaven is, we are here speaking at it right now, but throughout the world, people are watching through YouTube and Facebook, what have you, through the messages. And they, in turn, get the message through flying in the midst of heaven through the transmission that we are giving out. So we have, we have to look into the angel. First angel says, fear God. The second, he says, give glory to God, to him. And thirdly, he says, for the hour of his judgment has come. And fourthly, he says, worship him that made heaven, earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. So what does the, the Bible say? When he says, fear God, what are we to do? In uh, Proverbs 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and, every, and evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. 
So when the angel says you will fear God, the Bible is telling us here for us, the first thing to do is what? We are to hate evil. And the Bible tells us, I will set no evil things before my eyes. Pride, arrogancy, evil way, and a froward mouth. You know, we have to worry about our mouth because we cannot control our mouth. Uh, we are told in Psalm 141 verse 3, set a watch over my, on my mouth and keep the door on my lips. That's a prayer we have to pray to God on a daily basis that God may help us. You know, today, what was evil yesterday is no longer evil in the sight of men today. You know, what was evil yesterday is no longer evil today. If you watch the television, you see uh, the commercials they have there are men and men and women and women. So what was evil yesterday is no longer evil today. No wonder we are told by, by Isaiah 5 verse 20, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. They put darkness for light and light for darkness. They put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So here we are told here that uh, the world is not going, it's not going to get any better, my friends. What we see today is not going to get any better. Don't ever think that you were going to go back to where it was before because the Bible tells us it's going to get worse and worse. So Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So in other words, we have to fear God. And what are we to do? Keep his commandments. <coughs> That's because what? Because God's going to, for this is the whole duty of man. Amen? Not just some of our duty of man, but the whole duty of man. Not just to keep nine commandments and on Sunday go and keep that day holy. No. We are to keep the, all the commandments of God. <coughs> and it, another thing it says here, for God shall bring every work into judgment. We, we must ever be mindful of this. That we know at Seventh Adventist that this has started in 1844. And soon we're going to move into the name of the living. We're not going to get any better of uh, the way things are going. So we have to be mindful that a judgment is going on in heaven. And therefore we have to be ready on a daily basis. And uh, the, the verse also says, give glory to God. What does give glory to God, the Bible says about it. First Corinthians 10 verse 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all. To the glory of God. So right here in the first angel's message, we have the what? We have the health message. Right in the middle of this uh, first angel's message, we have the health message here. We have to ever keep that before us. As, as we keep our bodies a temple of God and following the, the, the health message, we don't have to worry about getting sick. Amen? Amen. Because if we, if we keep the law, the, the health laws, we won't be getting sick. But if we don't, we're going to have we're in big trouble. And that's what we're told in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we have here the, the health message here that we, are, we have to understand as we are living at this time. We have to be able to keep the law of God and also the health message. You know, we can't go out there and preach the health message and at the same time break it by what we do. And we're told in Isaiah 66, verse 16 and 17, For by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in a garden behind one tree in a mist, eating swine flesh, and about and an abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Another you know that as us as seven that minutes we consume pork uh, unknowingly throughout the year. Uh, we do it by eating things that we don't even read the ingredients what it is. A lot of stuff that we eat there's plenty of lard in there. So therefore we consume pork without knowing it. We have to be conscious of what we put in our body, amen? And we have to be very conscious of what we put in our body. Because those who eat pork will be consumed. And notice it says they're swine or a mouse. You know, a rat is very popular throughout the world today. It's very popular that people are consuming them because they multiply so in a short period of time. Huh? They don't have to wait till two years you know, for them to be able to put them to market. So if you go to China and other places in the world, they consume rat on a regular basis. 
So we have to be conscious of what we read, what you eat, and make sure you read the ingredients before you go. And the second uh, part of the fourth, the third part of the message says, for the hour of his judgment has come. Here we have 1 Timothy 5.24 and Hebrews 9.27. For some men's sins are before go, uh, sins are open beforehand, going therefore to judgment, and some men they follow after. As it is appointed to men once to die, and after this is the judge, but after is the judgment. So we have here that Timothy tells us that once our once we die, our record goes to heaven. And therefore it's being uh done in heaven, uh, being judged in heaven before Jesus will come because Jesus will not come unless the judgment is finished. Before every case has been appointed and every case has been judged, then Christ will come. He's not going to come uh, not before then. And right when he will come, he tells us here in Revelation 11 and 12, He that is unjust, this is what Christ will say when the judgment is finished in heaven. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. In other words, when Christ said his most solemn word in the most holy place, the high priest, then he says, what did he say? I come quickly. At this time, then, the, the plagues are falling. Because uh, every case has been uh, determined in heaven already before Christ will come. And whatever the way we are when he said it, let him be holy still, that's exactly the way it is. That's why today we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling because the judgment is going on in heaven. As we work out our, our salvation with fear and trembling, we are told here in Galatians chapter, I mean, Acts chapter 3, 19 and 20, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. So this is, the, this is at the time for us now to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. In this very um, first angel's message, we have to repent and be converted. Not repent and keep coming and coming to the Lord. Uh, we have to repent and be converted, that our sins may be blotted out. Every In the book of heaven, in a great controversy, if you have that book, please go and read the chapter Facing Our Life, our life Records. In that book, the, the Spirit of Prophecy explained to us how each name in heaven is written, all the sins we have committed, God's people has committed. It's written in the book of sin. In its book, as, as we repent of the sin, then the angel take the pen and, and write and blood on it, uh, repent it of. As we do this, the angel, God will keep uh, blotting out the sins in heaven as we are told in Acts 3 verse 19. Because right now is the time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord right now is the uh, judgment in heaven. You know, we have to pray to ask the Lord, show me some sins that I have not confessed before you. And you go about your day, maybe a week later, two weeks later, and the Holy Spirit will bring it to your mind, to your memory. That's the way of God showing you for you to repent of that sin. So that way God will go on ahead and, and blot that sin out of your name. Amen? That's a, that's a loving God. But soon the name of the living is going to go up to be judged. Before uh, the plagues fall. So this is today. As we read the first, the first angel's message. The very end it says. Uh, the very end of the, the, the Bible tells us. To worship him that made the heaven and earth and the sea. This is the last part of the first angel's message. In other words, God is saying, worship him. You know, today, are we worshiping God when, when we go worship another day? No, in other words, God is calling the people to come and worship on the seventh day. That's a fourth commandment. So remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, and the rest of the Sabbath day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the last part of the first angel's message is to come back and worship God. So the last part of the first angel's message is that God is calling a people to come back and worship the Lord at back home. We have uh, a radio program, and we also, by God's grace, in a television program. And 
by the way, uh, people in uh, my country, every church there, they worship on Sunday, I including our conference church there as well. So as we give out the message on the radio, and we give a three angels message, and the people will you know, call us and say, I never knew that I was keeping another day. And this is why we are to give. Because a lot of people out there who are in darkness, a lot of people out there who don't know they're worshiping a different day from what God had given us to worship on. And when they find that out, they are so happy over the, when they call me on the radio because we offer uh, spirit of prophecy books and whatever literature that we have and uh, translated books. And they're so happy. I had a man call me and he said, he was so happy on the phone. He said, I never knew that Sunday was the mark of the beast. I've been listening to your program for 10 years. Because you see, their mind is so ingrained, uh, so uh, into the things of the world, they don't understand what we tell them. You know, so be but be patient with our families, our neighbors, because it's our job to share with them. What I do, I just put a book in their in their driveway or in their mail and send it to them. And he was so happy to receive the the message that he said, I've been listening to the program. And I've been saying it for ten years too. Believe me, huh? That, that Sunday is the mark of the beast and the Sabbath is the seventh day. And uh, everyone there on Sunday, all the stores in our country is closed. There's no stores open, no buses running. And they all go to church. You hear the bell tolling all on, on Sunday. But when they, when they finally hit the home, they're worshiping on a different day. It's a whole different story. They're so happy. So I send them their books. And one man, we gave him a book. Uh, he said, uh, I offer a good controversy on a newspaper that we had a uh, advertisement in a newspaper and he came and took his book with him and six months later we did not see him and one uh, one day after six months he called and said I want to keep the Sabbath with you and we said okay well come Saturday uh, come Saturday and then keep the Sabbath with us at, our, at the church and, uh, and then he was so happy to come and many many people are happy to come we have pastors and bishops from the Mormon church they all call and they want their literature and we are so happy that God has made a way for us to be able to share this truth with them. It, as we show them, you know, in, in our radio program back home, that we are not on our, uh, we're not speaking from our own self. We are showing history with them. And they, when they found out that Sunday worship came from Rome, they're very happy. The earliest recognition of the observance of Sunday as a legal duty is in the Constitution of Constantine in 321 A.D., enacting all courts of justice, inhabitants of towns and workshops were to be at rest on Sunday when the village is solid, with an exception in favor of those who engage in agricultural labor. So we have here that uh, even though that uh, Rome has, uh, and another thing that we get a call from a program on our radio, a people are so happy they go, they go, uh, we had a call one time. It was uh, this cold voice who said on there, stop talking about our church. And I go, huh? We never mention any uh, denomination in our program. He goes, I know you're talking about our church and you need to stop. And, you know, we never, so that's one of the criteria when we first started a program on our radio is that you do not mention any kind of denomination on the program. And we never do. He goes, I know we're talking, I know you're talking about our church and you need to stop. Because, you know, by we let the Holy Spirit touch their heart and tell them who the beast is and, and, and so forth. And we thank the Lord for that we don't have to mention any names. And we just, uh, but we know as we are getting close and closer to the coming of Christ, we are told in Revelation 2 verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison. They may be tried. And ye have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee crown of life. Amen. So uh, all we have to do is be faithful to what we know. Hmm? And we are told here to be faithful unto death. And uh, you know, I, me myself, I have a big mouth and uh, I hope my mouth will be as big then as it is now as we are coming closer and closer to the coming of Christ. You know, our commission is giving in 9 Testimony, page 19. In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventist has been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. Unto them is shining a wonderful light from the word of God. 
they have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. Amen? So that's the work that's been given to each one of us here today, my brothers and sisters, is to go out and give this message out. You know, we have literature here in a foyer. If you're interested in passing out some literature, you can take it from us. It's free. Get a hold of uh, our elder back there, Brother Martinez, and uh, our elder elder, the pastor, and he'll give you some literature. And all you do is take that box of literature home with you, and uh, you just take a little bit out with you every time you go out of your house. You can put it on a bench. You can put it on someone's doorstep. And we just drive by and shoot them in people's driveway. You know, uh, you know, with the promise that God gives us that my word will not come back void. Amen? So we had to do that by faith. And, and if you are to uh, do exercises, walk, uh, walk with your literature and you put it on people's doorstep. You'll be amazed. You can do a hundred within maybe, maybe an hour or two by walking and doing exercises. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollo, but ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollo's watered, but God give the increase. For we are labors together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. So we are, what do we do? We put the seeds out there, and someone else comes and water it, but who brings the increase? God is the one to bring the increase. As we share with others the truth that we have, someone else has shared with them before. So all we're doing is watering and they're growing. Well, God will bring the increase as we share with uh, other people who are there. You know, we have been called of God for this work of giving these three angels' messages out. And we have a responsibility. We were in darkness at one time ourselves, but God here tells us in Ephesians 4, verse 14, uh, Esther 4, verse 14, If thou holdest, altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house will be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. We have been born in this world at this time for this specific reason that we are here. To share the truth that we have about the Sabbath, the law of God, the mark of the beast, the seal of God. That others may be enlightened from what we uh, uh, go out there and share. Because God is calling a people together. For many are called but few are chosen. Matthew 22 verse 14. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So we are to blow the trumpet here, my brother and sister. That's our job. To blow this trumpet that everyone might know. As I share God's truth with people, some of them may give me a dirty look and I do a lot of preaching out on the streets and some of them, they, if, they, if you could count how many times they kill by looking at you, you could count maybe a hundred times. I remember one time I preached in this uh, market, open air. I was preaching about the law of God. And after I preached about the law of God, I had one man who yelled and said, Hey, mister, did you not know that the law of Moses was nailed to the cross? And I looked at him and I said, Mister, so that means if I take a a machete and cut you in two, that means the law of God is not going to apply to me, right? So he didn't say nothing for about a few moments and he thought about it. You know, that the law of God is still binding, you know. You know, if I come over there and cut him in two with the machete, well, I'm not going to be in trouble because there's no law to hold me to it. So I went on, I passed out my books, I come back, uh, uh, you know, maybe ten minutes later, he's still sitting in a wheelchair, of all, you know. And he goes, hey, mister, give me a literature. I go, thank you. you know, so our message is not a message of, of a, a watered-down message, not to be covered. We are to tell it as it is. Amen. We are not, because that is the message that's been given to us, not to water coat it or cover it with, you know, fine words and soft words. Remember not to page 49. The end of all things is at hand. There's, there is need now of men armed and equipped to battle for God. Amen. Amen. Today is the day for us, my brother and sister. For, uh, John 4 verse 9 tells us, John 9 verse 4 
John 9 verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. This is the time for us to go and share this truth with us. There are a lot of cities throughout America. They have ordinances and you cannot go soliciting or knock on people's door. It's against the law. And as we get closer and closer for the coming of Christ, there's going to be more and more trouble and more laws and be put to heads a way of giving the truth. So today is the day that we are able to go out freely and give away this literature. And uh, as you give out to people, people, you know, we never know the, the fruits that we give out. Only through heaven. Uh, with the Spirit of Prophecy tell us in heaven, their guardian angel is going to come to your guardian angel and they're going to say, this is so and so. Meet him. He's the one who picked up that piece of literature that you left on his doorstep. And so on and so forth. The people that we give our donation to, that gives out and the, the message go out. You know, we have eternity. So the, the angels are going to be very busy in heaven throughout eternity introducing us and them to us who we have helped to gain eternal life. Amen? Heaven is cheap enough, we are told in the spirit of prophecy. So therefore, it's for us then to go out and share the truth we have while there is time. Soon there will be no opportunity given to us that we have to do the work undercover in China. They are burning a lot of Christians and killing a lot of Christians, burning a lot of churches. And people have been worshiping underground for a long time. As we get closer and closer to the coming of Christ, as we read here in Revelation 2 verse 10, that we will not be able to worship openly on Sabbath. There's works now being put together where it's against the law in the future for you to not go to school on Sabbath. So there are going to be laws put forth that we have to go and attend school. And if you don't go to school on Sabbath, your parents will get ticketed and, and so forth. That's the... That's the... Yeah, I mean Saturday. Yeah, Saturday will not be allowed to go to church on Saturday. And we thank the Lord that we still have an opportunity to church uh, to to worship in the freedom that the First Amendment is given to us. But <clears throat> as long as we have freedom for us to give this true thought with people and share with them, it's for us to do. As we learn here, the very first message here, the, the angel's message, the, and I saw another angel flying amidst the heaven, meaning that we are the the very last work is going to be a rapid one. It's going to go very fast as people will understand and hear the truth and they're going to share with others and then uh, the message is going to go worldwide and this message goes worldwide that we learn here in Rev uh, Matthew 24 verse 14 the gospel shall go to every kingdom then the uh, end will come at that time there we had to work out our salvation with fear and trembling ask the Lord on a daily basis to help not only us but our families our, our church members and all that we may be faithful that's what we have to ask the Lord. Help us to be faithful to God. As we are told here in Revelation 2 verse 10. Be thou faithful unto death. Then God will give us a crown of life. We only have one life to live. And we only have a little time to share this truth with others. As we know all of this, what's happening today. The pandemic and what have you. is all building up. It's going to come to a point here pretty soon. Pretty soon we don't see the Sunday churches going and saying anything about worshiping. But well, soon they're going to get together and, and, and make a Sunday love towards us. So it's us now to share as much as we can. Remember, if you need some literature, get a hold of Pastor uh, Cortez or, or uh, Elder Martinez, and they will give you the literature. It's free. And you just go and do your little bitty part and share with others as we are coming to the end. May God help each one of us to be faithful. And God bless you and I'll say a prayer for us. Our gracious Father, which art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning and the message. Help us, O Lord, to be a part of this first angel's message. Help us, O Lord, that we may strengthen us, that we may be able to go out and share these literatures with others and verbally and also do literature. Help us to your will be done in our life. Please continue to bless this Seventh-day Sabbath church, the pastors and the elders and all, all of us members here of Heavenly Father. Thank you for making a way for us, O oh Lord, to worship you, O oh Heavenly Father. We ask and pray and ask for this special blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.